Hello. Did you know that polar bears are left-handed? And did you know that a duck's quack doesn't echo? And nobody seems to know why. Did you know that pigs can't look up at the sky? I'm sure you know that if you farted consistently for six years and nine months that you'd produce enough gas to create the energy of an atomic bomb. Just thought I'd share those things with you. Bit of small talk you can use at your next awkward moment at a party. One thing we're all communally learning is that when you touch anything in nature, you'll find that it's attached to everything else. Pull up a chair, sit yourself down. I'll tell you the story about somebody's town. It's not very near, it's not far away. It's not a place that I want to stay Cause the people are scratching From the hedge of their feet Cause the rabbits have nothing to eat Winter came in with its cold icy blast It killed off the bushes and killed off the grass The rabbits were starving because of the freeze They started eating the bark off the trees Now the people are scratching from the head to their feet Cause the rabbits Had nothing to eat The farmer said this just won't do The trees will be dead before the rabbits get through We'll have to poison those rabbits, it's clear Or we'll have nothing to harvest next year Now the people are scratching From the head to their feet Cause the rabbits had nothing to eat So they brought the poison and they spread it around And soon dead rabbits began to be found The dogs at the rabbits, but the farmers just said We'll poison those rabbits till the last dog is dead Now the people are scratching From the head to their feet Cause the rabbits had nothing to eat Up in the air there were meat-eating fowl The rabbits poisoned the hog and the owl And all the little critters that the hawks used to chase Were multiplying all over the place Now the people are scratching From the head to their feet Cause the rabbits had nothing to eat Winter fields were barren and brown The hungry little field mice moved into town The city folks took the farmer's advice And they decided to poison the mice Now the people are scratching From the head to their feet Cause the rabbits had nothing to eat So in all of the houses, the offices, the flats the cats at the mice and the mice at the cats <laughs> killed the cats. The smell was awful and I'm glad to say I wasn't one of the ones had to haul them away. Now the people are scratching from the head to their feet cause the rabbits had nothing to eat. So in the countryside and all around town there wasn't a dog or a cat to be found. The fleas complain, where shall we stay? And they've been on the people from there to this day. Now the people are scratching from the head to their feet. Cause the rabbits had nothing to eat. There's a connecting link between the rabbit and man. There's a missing link between the brain and the hand. A few bales of hay would have helped him survive. Cost more to kill him than to keep him alive. Now the people are scratching from the head to their feet. Cause the rabbits had nothing to eat. That was written something like 50 or 60 years ago by Harold Martin and Ernie Mars, Americans. We've known about this for a long time. 
In the house that we moved to when I was eight, there were so many rooms, it was large, rather out of repair, and it was a big, big enough house to get lost in. It was big enough for the adults not to know what the children were doing. Mike and I were fascinated by the telephone, right from where we moved, because the telephone was in a little cubicle. On the bottom floor of the house, there were three large rooms, kitchen, dining room, and two living rooms. Uh, and in between the kitchen and the dining room was a whole set of servants' quarters. There was a servant's staircase, little thing going painted red going up to the next floor. And then there was a little cubicle. I don't know what that was for. Uh, maybe for intercom? I have no idea. And then there was the butler's pantry, which was kind of fitted in between the kitchen and the dining room, and then a little bathroom, and then a door leading outward, which is where we took deliveries. I mean, it was way beyond my parents' financial station, but that's where we moved to. But Mike and I were fascinated by the phone, and when we got enough privacy uh, to uh, just play with the phone, we did. We'd lift up the phone directory, which was only about an eighth of an inch thick for all of Washington, D.C., and we'd just point at somebody's phone number, and we'd dial it, and when somebody answered, we'd pretend to be the repairman. We'd say, hello, this is your refrigerator repair service. Is your refrigerator running, ma'am? And, of course, she'd say yes, and then we'd take our own voices. We'd say, well, we better run after it. It can run fast, you know, and then we'd hang up and then call somebody else. There are stages of what you do with the stages of the phone. And when voicemail entered the scene, people began to get very inventive in the early days with what they would put on the voicemail to greet the caller. I must admit, I feel quite offended by phoning somebody, and it's an automated one, because you never know who, 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 who the phone belongs to. It's nice to hear the voice of the person you're calling. So people began making really interesting answers for what the caller could hear if, if there was nobody home. Hello, this is Amanda's microwave. Her answering machine eloped with her tape desk, so I'm stuck with taking her calls. If you want anything cooked while you leave your message, just hold it up to the phone. I had to catch a train on the Amtrak line, and just to make sure my train was on time, I called ahead before I left home, and this is what I heard on the telephone. Press 1 if you want to go to Washington, press 2 if you want to go to Kalamazoo, press 3 if you want to go to Kankakee, press 4 if you want to hear more. Now the reason I called that Amtrak line was I wanted to know was my train on time. What could I do? I pressed four, and then the phone machine started yakking again. Press five to keep the call alive. Press six, and when you hear two clicks, press seven, and if nothing happens, press eight, and wait. Well, I was afraid it was going to miss my train, waiting for a human being to explain was my train on time, or was it late? This is what I heard when I pressed number eight. Press nine, if you're still on the line. Press ten to start it over again. Press eleven, press twelve, and press thirteen if you're tired of talking to a phone machine. Well, I was tired. I was ready to scream, ready to kill that phone machine. But I thought, what the hell? I'll give it a shot. I pressed thirteen, and this is what I got. Press one. If you want to go to Washington, press 2 if you want to go to Kalamazoo, press 3 if you want to go to Kankakee, press 4 if you want to hear more, press 5 to keep the call alive, press 6, and when you hear 2 clicks, press 7, and if nothing happens, press 8, and wait, press 9, if you're still on the line, press 10 to start over again, press 11, press 12, then press 13, have a good day. Your phone machine. I haven't sung that for a long time. It's wonderful. It's by uh, Joe Glazer, the iconic United States political songwriter. He lived in Washington, D.C., uh, which was really the best place to, to live if you want grist for your mill. Since the new CD uh, has been broached, 
uh, first farewell, which you can get on di digital. And as of the 9th of April, a couple of days ago, you can also get from me um, in a physical one, signed with anything you want me to put on it, providing it's not longer than about 10 words. A lot of the people who've been interviewing me about the CD, which our CD, because five of the songs were written with my two sons and one of my daughters-in-law, uh, they're people who are interested in how we wrote the songs, have asked some very interesting questions. And I must admit, I had no idea there were so many circumstances under which I had written a song. Well, I'm going to sing you a song called Jimmy Gray, uh, which is a, a kind of modern version of that habit that in the folk songs, uh, the suitors who come to court uh, the fair young maids, they offer tools of their trades, and they're always action tools, and they're very suggestive. Uh, so I don't know why I would have written a song like this. Let me tell you something about touring. Touring musicians, we stay up late, so we sleep late. So when your B&B &B only, only has breakfast to go with the bed, and the breakfast is only between 7.30 and 9, when you just want to sleep, uh, you don't get breakfast. And the cafes also open early, and then they shut from 10 till 12. And then from 12 to 2, they'll open for lunch. That, this is what it was like back then. I'm talking about the 60s and early 70s. And then they shut down for the afternoon. It just doesn't fit in with the way a touring singer uh, uh, singers work, you know. So uh, we started cooking uh, in the afternoons, cooking in the car, which is a little bit cramped in one of the old Citroen Light 15s, the one that Inspector Poirot, uh, uh, the one with the big bosoms in the front. Uh, loved that car, loved it, but it was very hard to cook in. And we had two little Gilwell stone stoves, one for the potatoes and one for the, for, for the, the stew. I've made many uh, liver and onions and uh, and all kinds of things in the back there. And this particular day I was making a steak Diane and I wanted some, some boiled potatoes with it to throw in. The French would be horrified. So I was sitting there, top of a mountain in Scotland. Ewan was probably reading the paper. And uh, all of a sudden this song just came came to me. And I jotted it down and here it is. It's called Jimmy Gray. <laughs> It was in the month of sweet July and a courtship just begun. They were both 18 years old, but he was a little too young. For whenever she'd ask him to do a little job, he was always heard to say, Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. Better go and ask Jimmy Gray. She said, I have a field of early corn, it's waiting to be mown. Love, would you come around with your scythe and help me to mow it down? He said, my scythe is rusty, too blunt for corn or hay. For a mowing machine, the best to be seen belongs to Jimmy Gray. She said, I have a little sports car, but it drives me round the bend. Would you come and fit me a new drive shaft, or maybe some new begins? He says, if you'll take my advice, you'll phone up the AA. But if you want a bang-up job, better go and ask Jimmy Gray. She says, I have a lovely feather bed, it's big enough for two. Nice and wide and strong beside, the frame is split in two. He said, my drill needs sharpening and there may be some delay. She's turned around and went to the phone and called up Jimmy Gray. He's fixed her bed, he's mowed her field, he's ground her corn to flour. Fed a new dry shaft and off they went at a hundred miles an hour. So fellas, if ever a woman asks, would you do a little job today? Just grab your tools and run like a hare, be there before Jimmy Gray. To those of you in America who are wondering why we would phone up the AA, although I did uh, flame some of the steak Dianes, uh, the AA in the UK is the Automobile Association. In America, it's Alcoholics Anonymous. 
Ah, teenagers and love. <laughs> I overheard somebody once saying, uh, with my son, I'm only worried about one penis. With my daughter, I'm worried about all of them. <laughs> so this is a song that I made. I think I got the idea from a cartoon. I don't think it's my idea. I just turned it into a song. It's called, Then God Made Adam. Okay. God made the mountains, the rivers and seas. God made the flowers, the bushes and trees. God made the birds and the beasts and the fishes. And then I believe he made Eve. Eve sat around in the garden. I think I'm a bit, I think I need a drink. Yeah. Although it is a bit late in the day. <clears throat> I've done a lot of work today. Let's try it again. Well, I guess you, you can hear the tune somewhere in here. God made the mountains, the rivers and seas. God made the flowers, the bushes and trees. God made the birds and the beasts and the fishes. And then I believe he made Eve. Eve sat around in the Garden of Eden, sunbathing and eating an apple and reading. God said, I'm leaving, but ere I depart, have you any requests? Eve said, oh yes, I'm sure that you made me the way that you like, but there's something down there. It doesn't feel right. It's easy to pee, but Lord, how it flops when I run. God said, hmm. God said, you need it. Eve said, I don't. God said, you'll keep it. Eve said, I won't. Eve fell asleep, and when she awoke, she'd a flower instead. She had breakfast in bed. When God came to call, he found his one and only human a cry, and she says, God, I'm lonely. You're always in heaven, God says, but I love you. She told him that isn't enough. God said, tough. So, picture the scene in the Garden of Eden, Eve trying to tell him just what she is needing. She says, you've got the angels, the devil, the sinners, the saints, and your son. I'm always alone. God was a scratch in his head, cogitating. At last he decided to make Eve a maiden. He fished in his pocket, came out with spare parts in his hand, and made man. So there. Hello, you've reached Michael and Sonia. We can't pick up the phone right now because we're doing something we really love doing together. Sonia likes doing it up and down, but I like doing it from left to right, really slowly. Leave a message, and when we're done with brushing our teeth, we'll phone you back. So, this is the last song in this set, and it's the last song of this series of lockdown concerts. They've helped me, you know, to keep going during this period of, well, not having any work at all. Uh, the song is called Lubrication, and take it easy. Lockdown is going to be ending soon and you have to enter smoothly back into society. We'll all be having withdrawal symptoms so it's better to enter the social scene with consideration, preparation and compassion for all of humanity. Uh, slip and slide, float and glide gently into social contact. Enjoy every moment of it. And this is lubrication. Certain moving parts are meant to get along together. They need to slip and slide, float and glide, cause they want to go on forever. Gotta take care of moving parts, they're easily irritated. 
make them scrape and they'll get out of shape and keep them lubricated. You need grease to help them do their job. It isn't just a matter of luck. It's a matter of skill, cooperation, and will. Remember that when you find you're stuck. Did the earth move for you last night, dear? Well, it sure didn't move for me and my mate Cause the earth needs oil, water and gas To regulate the state of her tectonic plates With the mining and the fracking, the crust is cracking We're putting our money on luck For want of lubrication, the game goes down Remember that when we're finally stuck That's just an example of how one human being needs another That bit in the middle uh, I never play this song on my own because the piece, piece in the middle needs my son Callum to play the delicious electric guitar that he plays on the on the, uh, the CD and that's the <laughs> <laughs> First time I've ever tried playing it on my own. So I got lost, but I kept going, and that's the main thing. Keep going. So, repeat. When you touch any human, you find that you're attached to everyone else. Thank you for being with me all this time. And I hope we meet in person soon. Bye-bye. Stay safe.